Welcome to the Astrological Weather Report for the August lunar cycle. My name is Daniel Fiberson, and thank you all for being here and uh, tuning in for this, this broadcast. I'm going to work with a new format that I, uh, that I haven't used before. So uh, I'd appreciate you know, feedback on it. Let me know if you think that these animations that I'm gonna use of the, the uh, charts are helpful or is it too much information or you know, did it help you understand as, as these things are unfolding? Uh, that will give me an idea of, of whether, you know, this was a good idea or not. So, so thank you all very much. So let, let's get started. So the universe is mental. This is the first hermetic principle. We are what we think. We, what we believe is who we become. Our thoughts and our beliefs become our values and our essential needs. And what we deem essential becomes our priorities. Our priorities determine the choices that we make and the choices ordain the future. We are our choices. It's very appropriate because Leo, the sign of Leo, this, the new moon that's coming up on Sunday um, is about who we are and who we are, we are becoming. So this is the chart for the uh, new moon. And, um, excuse me, I, I need to do something. I need to reverse two slides, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna walk you through so Mercury's not even retrograde. I'm gonna walk you through an overview of uh, this month. And then I'm gonna uh, unpack each of these uh, formations and aspects that I'm talking about individually and review the actual transits of the planets uh, through the month. So when we look at the Leo Aquarius polarity, it correlates to the development of our personality. And it's also the process of who we are becoming. Over the next four weeks, as the celestial energy shift from Leo to Virgo, we can learn to respond to outer events, outer world events with a more critical discernment instead of perhaps reacting from pure instinct. So Mercury correlates to our cognition and our mentation. It's our narratives and our ideas. Venus correlates to our relationship with ourselves and to others. And Venus holds the agenda of our priorities and essential needs. Mars correlates to our choices, which are determined by our values and priorities. The inner planets will be the focal point of four yods or finger of God formations. And a, a yod is uh, formed by two planets in sextile to each other, each conjunct, each conjunct to a third planet, which is the focal point with Mercury in a heated conversations with Jupiter, Neptune, Pluto, and Eris. Mars is gonna get testy with Chiron and Saturn and Jupiter and Eris, and Venus and Mars are also gonna be challenged by Jupiter and Eris. Three grand trines will open channels for more evolutionary transformation as Mercury, Venus, and Mars triangulate with Uranus and Pluto and Saturn and Mars. And Mercury and Mars will square the lunar nodes, awakening what's known in EA as skip steps, which applies renewed pressure for conflict resolution. Mars confronts Saturn, activating the lunar north node. Uranus will turn retrograde. And the event of the month, and much longer than the month, in my opinion, for the last two years, is the last quarter square from Pluto retrograde to Eris retrograde, the fourth of five epic squares not seen since the axial age. So this is the new moon chart and I wanna walk you through it. And we're gonna step through this so that we can, we can begin to see how this is gonna unfold. Whoops, tricky clicks here. So, on August 10th and 11th, we're going to have uh, Mars squaring the lunar nodes. And you can see it right here. 
uh, eight degrees, the nodes are at seven degrees. It's probably uh, late, late um, on, the, on the night of the 10th when, when it will perfect. And then on the 13th, the, we're gonna have a yod and it's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna, that's why I'm gonna break this down individually. But if you see these green lines here pointing at, um, pointing at uh, Venus, we can see that, that there's a yod uh, from Venus, two inconjuncts, an inconjunct to, uh, uh, to Jupiter and an inconjunct to Eris. Actually, I kind of skipped over a couple of things. I'm just going to go back here. I apologize. You can see also on the ninth, the eighth and ninth, we have uh, Venus trining Pluto, and <clears throat> we have um, we have an air grand trine here. As a matter of fact, between uh, Saturn, Venus, uh, excuse me, Saturn Vesta. And the, the, the winter north node and Ceres also, is also in play here. On the 10th, Mercury is going to perfect to an opposition to Jupiter. On the 11th, Venus is going to oppose uh, Neptune and Pallas. Uh, they, they're going to conjoin later in the month. We'll see, I have a chart that's gonna work with that. Um, and I've kind of chosen a midpoint here, but you can see that there's a strong opposition to both of these and they're working together. And this is a very interesting combination. Where are we here? Okay. So on the 12th, we have another yacht formed and this time Venus picks up uh, the focal point of Jupiter and Eris. And on the 15th, Mercury is going to square the nodes. So Mercury has now moved into the position where uh, uh, Mars was a couple of days earlier. And we have another uh, skipped, set, skipped step um, condition with Mercury. Excuse me. On the 19th, Uranus, let's go a little bit farther. Uranus is going to station retrograde, and we'll talk about that. And then on the 20th, this is the 20th, uh, we have another grand trine, and this time it's Venus, Saturn, and the lunar north node. And you can see it right here, painted out across the, uh, the, the, uh, the chart. We move up to the 24th. Uh, we've got Mercury opposite Neptune this time, where, where Venus was. So it's the second opposition to Neptune and uh, Pallas. And we see that the moon has also swept by. I, I, I didn't do the moon because it would, would take us the, the entire session to talk about all the lunar transits. I'll do them in my, in my dailies, uh, <clears throat> you know, as the, mo as the uh, month unfolds. But we can see that the moon is also in play here um, as, as uh, Mercury opposes uh, Neptune and Pallas. And then on the 25th, we have Venus opposite Chiron. And again, I think it's uh, late in the day of the 25th. On the 27th, Mercury now stands as the focal point of this yod with Jupiter and Eris. And then as we move into September, on September 2nd, here it is. On September 2nd, we have Venus um, in conjunct to Neptune. And the next day, September 3rd, we have a, a, the third of the grand trines where we have Mars, uh, excuse me, uh, Mercury now trining Saturn, Saturn trining uh, uh, Ceres and the lunar nodes, the lunar nodes also trining Mercury. And also on that day, we have the conjunction of Venus and Vesta. 
if you move ahead two more days across the fifth and the sixth, we have a cardinal T-square that forms as Venus opposes your, uh, Eris squaring Pluto. And this, this is the Pluto square that I referred to. It's the last square to square. I'm gonna address that in, in one of the later slides, but we, ha we have this impacting uh, directly on Venus on, on the 27th, excuse me, on uh, uh, September 5th. And then on the next day, we have one more aspect to look at. We have, a, we have the last yod as Mars now takes the focal point with um, Eris and Jupiter. So at the new moon, uh, it, it's in Leo. We have both, uh, both uh, luminaries in, in, in the sign of Leo and the sign of our self-actualizing uh, process. A new cycle of self-actualization can begin, excuse me. Who we are becoming is defined by our challenges and our experiences from the past. And I'll review them though. I think we're all relatively familiar with, with what this past has looked like. The, the emotional distress that has been brought on, uh, I'm assigning Eris uh, to it, uh, a loss of normalcy, isolation, loneliness, and lack of commitment, uh, I think is also part of, part of uh, what has brought us to us. And it's not just a lack of commitment to be a vaxxer or a non-vaxxer, it's a general complacency uh, that really has pervaded or, or the collective for longer than, than any of us want to, uh, want to uh, really acknowledge. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I, th I think commitment is really part of what this is all about. Uh, in Leo, our inner child can emerge and we can be we're literally, we're literally flooded with memories from the past, not necessarily our childhood, but um, it, it could be. And our way forward is best supported by commitment, as I said, to our self-care and to proactive health. Uh, you don't want to get vaccinated, that's okay, but you better be damn sure you take care of yourself and stay out of trouble. Uh, we, observing, our, observing ourselves and who we are unconsciously becoming, uh, become really conscious of, of what, what's happening because, you know, Leo is a, is a relatively instinctive uh, uh, archetype. We're, we're not always aware, you know, Leo is totally full of itself. I, I can say anything I want about Leo. I have three planets in Leo. Um, it, it can be so over the top, so full of itself that, that a pinprick will burst it. And um, it's listening to the messages of our inner voice. This Pallas, Athena, Neptune in Pisces conjunction has been going on for quite some time. It's, it's quite pervasive. I don't know how many of you are, you know, having very vivid dreams, getting, getting these uh, just downloads, you know, seemingly out of nowhere. Um, it, it, it's, it's really due to this uh, Neptune uh, Pallas conjunction. We, we have in this chart a fire grand trine with the sun, moon, and Leo, Chiron and Aries, and Ju Juno, and the lunar south node in Sagittarius. And then we also have a fixed T-square with, with the sun, moon, Saturn, and Uranus. So the Aquarius full moon occurs on August 22nd at 29 degrees of Aquarius. 29 degrees is a very, very critical sign. It's, it is uh, kind of like a balsamic um, a moon, a balsamic conjunction where we, we cannot cross the threshold. It's a liminal space. We cannot cross the threshold oh, in, into uh, the next sign, into Pisces, uh, in this case, until we resolve all of the Aquarian issues that are still hanging fire. So it, 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 there, it, there is a crisis, um, a crisis in consciousness, I, I guess we could call it. It's not a square. But it is it is that very last degree of, of Aquarius. Um, Aquarius is not going to be about unicorns, guys. Um, you know the age of Aquarius. If we look around and see the the crises and the and the the things that are happening to us in our outer world, um, it's a very good indication of what the age of Aquarius could look like. Uh, it's it's going to. Uh, definitely um, crises will arise as traumatic events expose our past infidelities and betrayals and infidelities it isn't necessarily to other people it could be infidelities to our own our own authenticity and and betrayals to ourselves as well as others um, and being betrayed by others um, there's a, a new awareness where it creates new perceptions and visions of the future and unresolved issues will hinder our forward movement this is the moon at 29 degrees 
we, we, we have to finish up and complete anything that's still hanging fire, um, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, but it, whatever it is that, that we need to work on, we need to identify it and get it done. Um, there'll be pressure to initiate a new cycle of self-care and proactive health. And we need to listen to those messages from our inner voice. Um, it, it comes from Pallas Athena and it comes from, from Uranus, uh, especially squaring Saturn. Uh, we don't, don't dismiss anything that comes out of left field. Uh, the healing mantra that I'm suggesting is that we, we, we repeat for ourselves that it is what it is and it is for my highest good, whatever it is. And again, we have, we have the, uh, the Grand Cross. This is essentially the same chart as the, as the, um, as the uh, new moon. The, the only difference is that uh, the, the, um, we, we, we have the, the, uh, the change of, excuse me, we, we, we have uh, the, this, the sun at, at uh, 29 degrees here of Leo and uh, you know, all, all this 29 degree energy is, is quite, quite dramatic. So uh, the next day, this, I'm sorry, this is the chart I was, I was, I was thinking of. The, the, on the same day, within hours of the full moon, the sun enters Virgo. Um, so the only difference in the, in the two charts, and this is what I was looking for, I, was, I didn't see the, the, the change, that's what confused me. Uh, here we have the moon moving into Pisces, five degrees. It's no longer 29 degrees of Aquarius and the sun has moved into Virgo, but virtually everything else in the chart is the same because it's only a couple of hours later. Uh, so it, it's, it's uh, you know, the playful quality of Leo is gonna morph into experiences of growth through crisis, which, which is the meaning of Virgo in the sixth house. And these crises will arise again as traumatic events uh, expose, you know, things in our outer world that, that um, we, we probably are, are, are not, you know, hoping to have to deal with. Uh, new awarenesses, new cycle of self-care and proactive health begins um, with this conjunction of Mars and Hygieia here in Virgo. And again, listen, listen, to, the, listen to those inner messages that you get. Um, it's, it's your higher self talking to you. So we're gonna we're gonna um, begin to move through some of these uh, planetary transits, and are gonna start with with uh, Mercury. And uh, let me kind of click through this. So on the tenth. Excuse me. On the ninth and tenth, we, we have this yod that forms, and this this is the yod that I talked about uh, with Mercury at the focal point, and it's it's a yod with Pluto and Neptune, and so powerful new images of self emerge from the subconscious, and we get intuitive hits, and this is going to great for poetry. Um, all creative uh, pursuits are are supported by by this aspect. And also in the 10th, we have Mercury opposite uh, Jupiter as well. Um, so this is about intuition and long conversations, uh, perhaps the urge to go on a long journey um, and long windedness, uh, questionable veracity and uh, tall tales. So we move up to the 15th. Mercury squares the lunar nodes. And this is a squi this st skip step is a better ideas and our beliefs beliefs. Um, you know we're, we 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 question long held outworn beliefs and 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 ideas. You know what is true and what is false. And moving ahead to the twenty sixth. Can see, you can see, you know, the, I, I think this is great because you can actually see how these, these uh, formations are unfolding as, as the inner planets swing around the Western hemisphere of the chart. Um, so in the 26th, we have another yacht and this is Mercury with Jupiter and Eris. Um, this could be words that wound or words that heal, okay? Uh, we have to be careful with, with, our, with our language. And again, we see the moon here sweeping by uh, first um, 
Chiron, but also uh, conjunct Eris that day, uh, bringing it directly to our emotional body, bringing, bringing emotional events, emotional inner or generated by outer world events. You know, the, what, what happens in the Western hemisphere is what happens outside of us, what happens in the Eastern hemisphere is what happens on the inside of us. So, it, so it's definitely a combination of, of, of potential turmoil. And also in this, this same period, we've got this grand trine with uh, Mercury, Uranus, and Pluto. Now the, the trine to, from Pluto to era, uh, Uranus is quite brief, um, and it's only because Uranus um, is stationed, uh, going to begin to move retrograde and uh, start to move back into orb, um, uh, back, back into orb, you know, it's, it's 10 degrees apart, but it's still there. And uh, so th this, you know, grand trines are opportunities. So th this is an opportunity to grant innovative ideas into structured plans, uh, but it can also be cynicism, uh, but could, it can be being dictatorial, orations, um, and it can be freedom seeking travel plans, you know, tired of being cooped up, I want to get out. The next day, uh, we have we have the uh, the next yod, which is Mercury, Jupiter and Eris. And these are incon inconvenient truths. And once again, this could be harsh words um, and chaotic thoughts. So, you know, all these Mercury transits, these challenges to Mercury, we really have to watch what we say because words can, woo uh, can wound, words can heal. Uh, it works both, uh, the, the gate swings both ways. And as we move on into September, we have another grand trine. And this time it's Mercury, Saturn, and the lunar nodes, uh, the lunar uh, north node and, uh, and Ceres is also in play here. So, so this is an opportunity to manifest ideas that support a more balanced vision of the future. Uh, the ability to construct new personal paradigms and to turn ideas into reality. So this is gonna be uh, Venus's transits. You know, Venus is our, our values and priorities. Mercury is our ideas and beliefs. Uh, the, the, these, these are the, the, the parts of us that are in play. Uh, just, just to, you know, to digress for a moment, you know, the sun, the sun floods, uh, the sun uh, permeates us with, with uh, solar life force. It's the life force that fills the solar system. It's the moon that, that, that uh, permits, the, it has the capacity uh, of, or the flow of that energy through our bodies, through our emotional, mental, physical, and, and spiritual bodies. But it, it's the inner planets, Mercury, uh, Venus, and Mars, which, which are really are, are, are the, uh, the, the, not just the nuances, they, they really define the way that those core uh, soul lunar um, energies or frequencies are gonna play out. That, it's really our, our individuality really comes through the way we express ourselves and, and what we believe and, and, and the choices that we make. Um, that's why I'm really putting the focus on, on these, these inner planets because, because I think that, that that really is the key to who we are. Um, a lot of people were born with the sun and even the moon, perhaps, um, in the same position as us. But it's 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 the inner planets that really hold our own very personal values and 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 uh, and character. So, on August eleventh, move, move along here. On August eleventh, Venus trines Pluto. Uh, so we have opportunities to build um, healthy relationships, uh, sharing power, working on our personal shadows, uh, jealousy, repressed anger, um, lack of responsibility. Also on the 11th, Venus opposes Neptune. So th this can be feelings of betrayal or abandonment. Uh, it, it, we can feel a loss of identity or an inadequacy, Virgo, or conflicting inner narratives. And then on the 12th, the next day, the Siad forms, and this can be difficult. This is encountering hostility, perhaps, uh, Jupiter, Venus, Jupiter, and Eris, uh, narcissism, self-centered behavior from others, challenges to personal priorities. Uh, we need to ground our relationships in fruitful discussions with our partners. 
Uh, it's it's the way it's the way through this uh, when, when these when these crises and challenges show up. And move, moving ahead here to, to the 20th, we have another uh, Air Grand Trine, and this is Venus, Saturn, and the Lunar North Node. Again, Ceres is in play here. Um, this is taking responsibility for our pri the priorities that we are advancing. Saturn is responsibility. Venus is our priorities and our values. And this is inspirations for new priorities going forward, uh, the Lunar North Node. On the 25th, on the 25th, uh, we have Venus perfecting to an opposition to, to a Chiron. Again, it, it happens later in the day. Uh, it, is at, it is at approximately 12 degrees. Um, this is encountering healing or healthcare support from others. Uh, people will show up, you know, in some way who were there for us. Uh, to heal ourselves uh, and or to you know different not just health but you know old wounds perhaps um, but it's also recognizing the priorities that we're holding on to that are self-defeating <clears throat> um, I, I have I haven't included this trine because this is uh, we, we basically we basically talked about this it's the same energies um, that we've that we've really discussed. And then on September 2nd, so September, uh, we have Venus in conjunct Neptune. So we have another, another hard aspect to Neptune and to uh, Pallas Athena. So there, there's a need here for self-compassion. And you know, again, it's, it's dissolving old priorities. We, we have to recognize that some of the things we're holding on to, we need to let go of. Uh, circumstances are taking them away from us, um, but you know, in many cases, we're we're trying to hold on to them. We're gripping even tighter uh, to not let them go. And then on the on September third, we have uh, <clears throat> Venus conjunct Venus conjunct Eris. So these are priorities again that promote authenticity in relationships and with ourselves, We have to be authentic to ourselves. If, if, we're, if we cannot respond authentically to the world around us, we can't be authentic in anything else that we do. Um, and it, it, will, it will definitely affect our relationships if, if we can't find, if, you know, we, if we're always saying yes to what everybody else wants to do or somehow saying no what to what everybody else wants to do as well. So we move on to Mars. And on the 11th, let's get to the 11th. On the 11th, we have Mars squaring the lunar nodes. So, you know, Mars is our choices. Uh, Mars is the choices that we make based on Venus's values and priorities. Uh, and note Venus's values and priorities stem from the ideas that we have in our head for Mercury. So this, in many ways, is the culmination. You know, we, we also know Mars as the lower octave of, uh, of Pluto. Um, th these these are, are soul-based, uh, instinctive, in, uh, very instinctive. Mars and Aries are instinctive expressions. Uh, how we're acting instinctively without thinking about it. Uh, things that we're, we're just, you know, we just choose to do, uh, perhaps because it's what we've always done or because somebody else told us to do it. Uh, brings up the authenticity, you know, uh, dynamic again. Uh, but but this is going to be skipped steps that need to be resolved. And the the um, resolution node is this uh, is this lunar north node, which means that we need to be addressing what we really are intending uh, for for our future. You know, what what are our soul soul intentions for the future all is. You know, are you projecting a future constructed from old beliefs? Are current choices consistent with your intended future? And is there any direct action? Are we taking direct action to achieve those goals? On the 13th, which I don't know if you're superstitious, is also Friday the 13th, we have, we have the odd with Mars, uh, Saturn and Saturn retrograde and Chiron. So are we, are we making responsible choices regarding our health? Um, health crises could show up, you know, the, these yards, these inconjuncts 
Uh, I don't see, I don't think that an inconjunct is a, a minor aspect by any stretch of the imagination. They can be very powerful, especially when, they, when they're two outer planets. Uh, you know, when, when Pluto makes an inconjunct or anything makes an inconjunct to Pluto, an outer planet, that probably is only going to happen once in your lifetime. It needs to be paid attention to. So again, are we making, um, are we making uh, responsible choices regarding our health? Um, and again, health crises could show up and we also could be, feel wounded. We could feel wounded by authority. And moving about a week ahead here. So the 22nd, we have an Earth, another Earth grand trine. And this is Mars, uh, Uranus, and Pluto. Uh, no, excuse me, Mars, Uranus, and the and uh, no, it's, it's, this is the lunar nodes of Neptune. I, I have a mis uh, my notes are incorrect here. Um, it's 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 an opportunity to, to harness these evolutionary energies, um, and 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 to and that can be difficult, and to alter um, difficult circumstances. We, re we really need to, we really need to be working with our, our nodal axis, which is what this is about, um, and and listening to uh, you know the still small voice within us that's telling us what choices we should be making, um, not listening to you know what we what we what we did before, making some different choices. And moving ahead to September. Moving ahead to September, we now have Mars opposite uh, Pallas Athena and Neptune. So this is a conflict between what the higher self is telling us and actually doing the work that's being suggested by our higher self. Uh, these are struggles with authority figures and it could also be encounters with powerful women. And on September 6th, we have we have the yod with Pluto, excuse me, with uh, Jupiter and Eris to Mars. Um, so this is an impulsive, overconfident behavior, uh, it, and it can be met with uh, forceful responses. So watch out for making choices as a result of a sense of desperation, or again, you know, just instinctively. We we really need to make conscious choices. That's that's what most of these these formations and aspects this month are about. We we need we need to be aware of who we are and who we were becoming. We need to, to take a look at this, this self-actualization process while we're in Leo to see how, how we're growing, how we've grown, what we've grown out of, what we're growing into, and begin to make choices that are, that are, that are simpatico with where our soul is intending us to go, where our higher self is telling us we need to be. On, on August 9th, uh, we have um, an air grand trine with Saturn, Vesta, and, and uh, Ceres and, and the nodes again. Uh, so circumstances emerge that encourage a posture of self-nurturing and personal authenticity. Again, there's the authenticity word in our relationships with self and others. Um, what's active here is the ongoing square between Saturn and Uranus that, 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 that began uh, the beginning of, of this year and will continue through uh, up, up until, I believe until February of 2022. So this is, this is gonna be a long, a long uh, transit because Saturn is, is first you know, still retrograde and is gonna have to come back and then move all the way out of orb. Uh, so th you know, th this, this is you know, again, a, it, it's a, a, a wake up call to you know, really look at what, what's going on, what we're doing. So uh, this is the Uranus station retrograde chart. Um, stations retrograde on the 19th at 14 degrees of Taurus. Um, it's going to join all. It's it's actually the last of the outer planets to, to retrograde. Saturn's already Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune. Uh, Uranus, 
Uranus, Uranus is going to uh, station. They're, they're all, all the outer planets are going to be, um, uh, Eris, are all going to be um, moving backward. Um, happens once a year. They don't always all coincide, but it, it's going to be quite impactful. You know, I keep, I keep, you know, people keep asking me what's going on. And it and it's clearly these you know these outer planet retrogrades, um, but I think it's more than that, and I'm going to come to it. Uh, what I, what I really believe is happening in a minute. Um, so so uh, Uranus retrograde is going to be the pressure to conform to societal demands. That's what the Saturn Uranus square is all about, um, and it's a crisis of, of the need for compliance with consensus thinking, in spite of our personal beliefs. Sometimes we have to go along with the crowd. Uh, we have to go along with the science, even if we believe that, you know, maybe there's something else going on at a deeper level. Uh, but when our, you know, when our health is at stake, um, I believe that, you know, you go with the science. Just my opinion. Uh, there's a pressure to build progressive platforms that re-image the future, you know, to, to reimagine, you know, what, we, what we're going to do going forward. You know, we're, we're dreaming this, guys. It, it, nothing's set in stone, especially our future. Uh, even the past, uh, both of them can be reimagined. Uh, and, and there are many probable futures that stretch out from any given point in time. It's the choices that we make today that's going to determine you know, what happens tomorrow. Uh, the, there's pressure here to build progressive platforms that reimage the future, but there's also pressure to regress back to the past. Uh, uh, Uranus uh, works both ways. Uranus really is about wanting things to change. Um, some of us want things to go forward, you know, progressively for things to, you know, to, to improve and to, you know, to move towards that, you know, dreamed of golden age that's out there, you know, somewhere in the future. Uh, but there's also the pressure, you know, among other people who have, you know, have Uranus working in their charts for things to go back the way that they used to be. And, and those, that's the polarity that we're struggling with right now, um, you know, politically. Is, is that push me, pull me, you know, that being stretched out at the center, which way is it going to go? Um, it, there's difficulty maintaining personal authenticity. You know, we, we, we have to hold, you know, hold the center. We, we have to find, you know, what, what really is our authentic center and, and work with it. You know, not, not what somebody else, our neighbor, our best friend says necessarily we should do. And it's, and it's a perfect time for personal review and evaluation and taking responsibility for ourselves. Question that it, it begs is, where do I go from here? So this is the Pallas Athena retrograde conjunction, Neptune retrograde that I referred to. Excuse me one second. You know, Pallas Athena is what's one of, what is known as the octave transformer between Mercury, the lower mind, and Uranus, the higher mind. What that means is that Pallas is able to take those inspirations that seem to come out of left field and, and that seem irrational and pull them down into our, you know, into rationality to find practical applications of what seems to be, you know, seems to be impossible and really isn't. And it joins with Neptune, which is our connection to that which is greater than ourselves. So this, this is an open channel to the source of all that is. It's, 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 it's quite an, an amazing thing. It doesn't happen very often, and we need to take advantage of it. Um, and, and again, you know, I, I, I suggest perhaps that, you know, we, we have vivid dreams, even lucid dreams, uh, even waking dreams. Uh, pay, pay attention to them all. Um, our awareness is focused on the compatibility of what we deem to be true and the choices that we have made regarding our proactive self-care. This is IGEA. And the discernment of uh, that that uh, collates our choices. We, we have to begin to, to, to discern the choices that we make, not just health-wise, but, but elsewhere in our lives as well. So this is the Pluto retrograde square Eris retrograde. You can't see the retrograde because it's covered up, but it's there. Um, it's happened five times. This, this aspect has been in orb from 2017, and it's going to be around for another three years. And in my opinion, it is the most significant event of the past two years. Um, it has not happened since 691 BC. It's the only other time in recorded history where this particular last quarter square from Pluto in Capricorn to Eris in Aries in recorded history. 
Okay. The last time it happened, Buddha, Lao Tzu, Plato, Homer, Pythagoras, Isaiah, and others, other, other great teachers were on the planet and they brought the great thought streams of Western civilization with them onto the planet. They emerged during those years. This is the impact and the intensity and density and, and, uh, of what's happening to us. But you know, this, it's, it's also bringing chaos and discord on a planetary level. We're, we're undergoing a radical transformation of our collective values and our priorities. COVID, Donald Trump, they're homeopathic remedies for what's wrong with our culture, okay? We're not being punished. This is not taking us down. This is actually lifting us up. It's just that it's very hard, but it's because of our complacency. It's because of our lack of commitment. It's because of our inability to, 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 you know, to, to be aware of our choices and, and, uh, and, and, and what we have done, but it's changing. We're, we're, we're being forced to change. We're going down that road, uh, whether we wanna go, go or not. We can go willingly or we can go head first or feet first, but we're gonna go either way. Uh, they, 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 this, will, this will create narratives that support proactive health choices going forward and not just physical health, but emotional health, spiritual health, mental health uh, on all levels. This, this is what's happening. So as I said, neither the past nor the future is set in stone. Accepting and surrender to what is allows us to reframe the past, to reimagine it, to rethink it, to what really happened, and to come to terms with it. Everything unfolds exactly as it is supposed to on its own schedule. The future is made up of probable futures. Our choices made in the present determine which future will unfold. From our subjective vantage point, we feel pain, sorrow, or a sense of loss when challenges show up in our lives. The crises we are experiencing are occurring in order to facilitate the resolution of situations that we have been unable or unwilling to resolve on our own proactively. As time passes, we will learn that what has occurred was for our highest good. So don't react, respond. It's simply some idea that we have that keeps us stuck. We are what we think. We become what we believe. We are our choices. The future coalesces thought by thought, choice by choice. Choose consciously and choose wisely. Um, I don't know if this is gonna happen. I, I have this slide in here. I was just informed that it may or might take place. Um, if not, I'm gonna be speaking to this on my own or perhaps just with a couple of these speakers. But the US is in the throes of its, of its uh, US, uh, of its US uh, Pluto return. Depending on the chart that you use, it doesn't unfold till next year. I use a chart that's a year earlier. Um, it's the Revolutionary War chart from the day that the Second Continental Congress actually declared war on England. You know, when a colony declares war on its mother country, it ceases to become a colony. Um, it's a very effective chart, it's full of information. Um, according to this chart, we've already had two Pluto returns. We have one more coming up on Christmas Day. Um, it's going to be a great talk. So, so join me. I'll keep you posted on, uh, on when it will be actually will be aired. And this is how you can reach me. I do consultations that answer the questions, who am I, why am I here, what are my lessons? My astrological weather reports like this are available monthly here and on EA Zoom and uh, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis also on uh, Facebook. And this is how you can reach me. I thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, please send me feedback on this new format if you liked it or hated it, or tell me, tell me how, you how, how it worked for you. Uh, but I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you all so much for coming. Namaste. Daniel, would you like to take some questions or? I will open the floor, Sue, if anybody has any questions. Okay, so if anybody has any questions, just uh, say in the chat that you have a question and I'll unmute you. I have a, a comment to start it off while people are thinking. I find it really fascinating that that the the setup of these um, transits is first 
uh, Mercury, Venus, and Mars all square the nodes, and then they they move into that um, yod. So yes. um, yeah. So what what is your thinking on you know what I mean? It, it, first we have the the um, the square to the nodes offering us a, a chance to look at the skip steps, and then continuing on with the um, the resolution. Is that is that how you see it? Well, yeah, we're, we're, it's moving from, you know, the idea that it becomes an idea and then it becomes a priority and then it becomes a choice. Uh, that's 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 the whole you know thrust of, of what I'm trying to express here, that, um, that, that we, excuse me, that, that we do, you know, it, 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 that's the process that unfolds, you know, behind the scenes all the time. Uh, so it, it's it's natural, you know. It's a, it's a natural progression, especially what we're seeing, and it's and to some degree, it's based on the their synodic cycles on the speed of their orbits themselves. But but yes, it's it's uh, uh, you know with all of them, you know, in, in uh, moving through Leo and Virgo, op opposing these planets in Capricorn and and Pisces and Aquarius, we're we're getting all these oppositions and in conjuncts. And it's it's triggering them. Uh, you know, every, everybody wants to have you know grand trines in their charts. Oh God, I got a grand trine, or it's not great. Well, grand trines make us into a catch potato because a trine will pass unnoticed. It, it it's 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 so facilitating that we may not even know that it's happening. You know, as astrologers, or if we go for reading, or we we follow you know a horoscope, you know, we may see that it's there. But we have to we have to address it. We have to approach it proactively, or it will pass unnoticed. When there's a square in opposition or an inconjunct, <laughs> we're going to know about it, and it's going to get us off the couch. That that's where the work gets done. It's not with the trines. The trines make it easier for us, and they show us the remedies for the, the challenging aspects, but we need those challenging aspects. Uh, otherwise, we, we, you know, we, we really don't get much accomplished. Awesome. Well, it doesn't look like uh, we have any other questions. So um, would you like to wrap it up and call it, call it good for today? Yeah, if nobody else has any, 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 any other questions, sure. That's, there's one, there's some, one chat here. Oh, that's you, okay. So that's fine. I, th I thank you, everybody. And uh, I'll see you next month, if not sooner. Awesome.